Hello guys, we are back with our next lecture. In this lecture, let us go through the concept of a principal compound analysis. Okay, so this is also a dimension reduction method. Guess you can say it is an algorithm or an analysis method using which you end up reducing a one dimension with this process, guys. Okay, yes. So it is a way of identifying patterns in the data of x of expressing the data in a way to highlight their similarities and differences that is nothing but dimension reduction okay so basically i don't i also don't know that why did i write this definition there okay so you can just start with the dimension reduction so here we'll be trying to reduce one dimension guys okay so the main goal of pca is to reduce the dimension so higher dimension to lower dimension so dimension is nothing but the futures okay so your question will be so do we get a problem in our examination in this topic so if you ask me there is a very very rare chance of getting a problem guys because the problems in this topic are easy i'm not saying they are too tough but the conceptual knowledge which the student should have is a bit more guys because you, you any normal student will not be learning these kind of concepts okay so that is the reason why i'm saying it's a bit complex problem only but there is a very rare chance that you can expect a direct problem in the examination i am not saying you are not going to get but there is a less chance if you ask me the probability is around 0.3 or 0.4 out of 1 okay yes so let us start so the data set here we gave so i'll be explaining you with the problem itself guys okay so don't worry even if problems comes we are we will be able to solve it okay so don't worry so along with problem we will learn steps guys so we will learn exact steps like how we are solving it so in examination if it is given as a theory question in last year paper it is given as a theory question simply in two years papers guys okay yes so you can write these steps and you can show that how it is done exactly okay yes okay so data set will look in this way x 4 8 13 and 7 in y we are having 11 4 5 14 so here it is a 2d data set right so here it is having two attributes first attribute second attribute so guys please understand that sometimes i might use attribute sometimes i might use future sometimes i might use row so all of them represent the same category thing guys okay or sometimes i might use dimension also okay yes so we got x and y right yes so the first step that you need to do is so for the given data set identify the number of futures so futures are nothing but x and y so we are here we are having two futures right yes similarly capital n indicates the number of samples so here we are having four sample data okay so then draw this table guys guys i think most of you are confused that why i am drawing this table now but you will understand because these values we will be using in multiple formulas that is the only reason why I am I'm asking you to draw it now. So first of all, write x value, write y value. So write these two values only. There is no need of drawing this whole table. Okay. So once you wrote them, so the next step is calculating mean. So what is a mean guys? Mean is nothing but summation of all these by number of items. Right. Again, summation uh, mean of y is nothing but summation of all these by 4. Right. Yes. So that is the reason why I have directly written totals here. So I instead of calculating it, I can directly 32 by 4. Similarly, 34 by 4. So, we got 8 and 8.5. Okay. So, the next step is a computation of a covariance matrix. Okay. So, if you recall, in third unit, the first two topics, we discussed about covariance and all those concepts, right? I think in the first lecture only, in 3.1 basic statistics, you can find it. Okay. So, the covariance formula will look in this way, guys. So, x minus x bar, that is nothing but your mean into y minus y's mean summation so you'll add all of them so basically this is the reason why i have wrote all the means guys so basically i calculated the x minus x bar for these values and y minus y bar for these values so i wrote them i squared them i even multiplied them each other okay so what is the formula of covariance is okay so covariance formula will look in this way and you need to form a matrix right so matrix you will be forming in this way guys so basically you are trying for x y right so x y so you write in this way and covariance of x comma x covariance of x comma y covariance of y comma x covariance of y comma y so you need to find these four values guys okay so here x and x is same hence these both values will be same right so that is the reason why we calculated these values so basically the sum is this only guys it is directly 42 the numerator value okay by n minus 1 so it is 3 okay similarly covariance is this covariance of x comma y is this multiplication total minus 33 by 3 
minus 11. Guys, you can calculate here itself by step by step, but that will create a complexity for the evaluator as well as for you. So that is the reason why I drawn a simple table. So is it is this table complex guys? No. Is it helping you? Yes, it is helping you a lot. Okay, remember one more thing is that both these values will always be same guys. Okay, so if you want, you can calculate them or you can just directly write the same values. Okay, so once you solve them, you will be writing the covariance matrix. So this matrix is called as a covariance matrix. Okay, so once you wrote the covariance matrix, then you will find the eigenvalues, eigenvectors and you will normalize the values. Okay, so a few of you might remember. So in mathematics one, so it is way long ago in our first year. Okay, so we discussed, I think I made videos, but it's not in first year, but in third year, I made the videos for the, for that eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Okay, so if you want, you can watch that lecture to learn how we are calculating eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Okay, yes. So anyway, I'll be explaining you here again. Don't worry. So the first step is calculating eigenvalues, then vectors, then normalizing the values. Okay, so let us start with eigenvalues. So the formula will look in this way, guys. So it is nothing but a debt or for matrix, we will be saying it as a debt, guys. Okay, so debt of a yes is our original matrix, which we gave here, 2 cross 2 matrix. Okay, minus a lambda into i is equal to 0. Here, lambda is nothing but identity matrix. If you remember, identity matrix is the one which has the column values as a 1, guys. Okay, so you will be multiplying this with the lambda. So you'll be getting something like this, right? So if it is a two cross two, you'll be getting only till here. Okay, so if you subtract that from yes, you'll be getting this. So you'll be this is our s and this is our lambda matrix, right? Yes. So if you subtract them, you'll be getting in this way. Okay, so once you got this as the result, so now you you should perform debt, right? Yes. So basically debt is nothing but it is multiplication of these two minus multiplication of these two because it is a two cross two matrix. So if you solve it, you'll be getting this as a result and use Calci guys. So basically in Calci, we are having these functions, right? Yes. So using these functions, you can directly calculate them. Okay. Okay. Yes. So I hope everyone got, everyone can use, right? Yes. We are uh, addicted to Calci. You can so, so even to calculate two plus two, we'll use Calci, right? Yes. So using Calci, you can just calculate it guys. If you want, I'll be just showing you. Just give me a second guys. Okay, guys, I brought my Calci. So basically my Calci version might be different with yours. So please, you please check YouTube video or anywhere you can find the how to do it, guys. Okay, so it will be almost the same, I think so, but I'm not sure about it. Okay, so firstly, I'll be coming to setups and here I'll be selecting equations or functions. Okay, so once I select it, I'll be pressing equal to then I'll be moving on to polynomials. Then the degree of our polynomial is a two. So I'll be start typing the values so one minus 37 and 201. Okay, so I'll be ending up with values 30 point something and 6 point something. So that is the exact result which we have wrote. So using Calci, you can do it within one minute maximum. Okay, yes. So we got the eigenvalues now. So using these eigenvalues, you need to find the eigenvector. So basically in the previous formula only, just multiply ui guys equal to 0. So this is nothing but to find eigenvectors, we use this. Okay, yes. So substitute the values of yes, lambda 1 and i. So basically here, lambda 1 is nothing but our value which we got. Okay, so once you substitute and solve it, you will be getting this matrix and u, u1 I separated it in this way, u1 and u2. Okay, so now equate them guys. So basically it will look in this way, right? So minus 16.3849 minus 11.11 u2 is equal to 0. So now send one of them to the other side. So it will look in this way guys. So just give me a second. Okay, yes. So I just divided them, equi I, I divided and equated them. So u1 by 11 is equal to u2 by minus 16.3849. So I assumed it equals to 2 and I substituted t value as 1. So I got the value of u1 and u2. So I'll be assuming them as my eigenvectors. Okay, yes. So once you got the eigenvectors, you need to normalize them. So basically the eigenvectors always remember that the value should be less than 1 and it should be greater than minus 1. So it should be in between them. Okay. Yes. In between minus 1 and 1. So to normalize them, you will be just doing under root of this square plus this square. Okay. So you will be doing for both of them, you will be getting this as the result. So similarly, you do for eigenvector 2 also. So basically, you do the same process with eigenvector 2 6.6151. 6 so you'll be getting this as a result. Okay. So this is the only complex part, guys. If you ask me in the whole problem, this is the only eigenvectors, eigen. Uh, values and normalization is the only complex part where you need to concentrate. So once that is done, it's a piece of cake for you to continue. Okay. So now your goal is to derive the new data set guys. Okay. So the new data set will look in this way. So P11, P12, P13, P14. Okay. So the logic is really simple. So to calculate P11, you will take eigenvalue 1 to the transpose of X minus X bar 
and the second value is y minus y bar. So you, these values you can directly get from the table and these values we have solved them. So you'll be, sorry, you'll be doing the cross multiplication. So this into this plus this into this. You'll be getting this. So similarly, you continue for others also. You'll be getting these values. Okay. Yes. So this is our final table, guys. Our new data set, which is having only a single row or single future. Got it? Yes. So I hope everyone got some clear idea, right? So you will be asking me like, is that data set showing everything? You might be having it out, right? Yes. So basically these eigen vectors will always be perpendicular guys. So at a 90 degrees. So if you try to draw a graph for them, so basically here the point which we took directly is a 8 comma minus 8.5 thing. So just give me a second. 8 comma 8.5 thing. So X. Okay. So X is 8 and the uh, y is 8.5 so for this values we have drawn this graph guys okay so that point is this okay so based on that i have just, just uh, drawn this angular so basically you i might be asking that how did i draw this line and how did i draw this line right yes so that is a uh, drawn from these eigen values guys okay so this value concentrate 0 0.5 and this is minus 0 0.8 so this is our right. So basically this is a minus right so 0 0.8 i took here and a 0 0.5 i took here Okay. Yes. So basically if you take these two, this point will be here, right? Yes. So that uh, according to this, to pass these two, I have drawn a line that is E1. Similarly, the E2 is nothing but 0 0.8 and 0 0.5. So 0 0.8 and 0 0.5 took here and to pass these two, I drawn this line. So if you notice these two are really perpendicular to each other. And I use the scale reading guys. That is the reason why I got a neat graph. Okay. Yes. So I hope everyone got some basic idea about this eigenvalues and eigenvectors. If you want to even plot the values, you can plot on these lines guys. Okay. Yes. So I hope everyone got some basic idea on this, right? Yes. So at the end, we got the data in one dimension. So this is our final goal, you can say. Okay. Yes. So I hope everyone got a clear idea. So in the next lecture, we'll be discussing about the linear discriminant analysis. So this is one more method which you can apply. But when you compare with the normal uh, analysis, which we did till now, that is a bit easy when compared to this case. Okay. Yes. So let us meet in the next lecture and discuss about the linear discriminant analysis. So let us meet in the next lecture. Thank you. Thanks for watching.